What is herpes? Herpes is a long-term infection caused by herpes simplex virus. It is an enveloped, double-stranded DNA virus of herpes viridae family. As we know that herpes simplex virus causes a mucocutaneous lesion, this virus enters into the body through skin or damaged epithelium and leads to the formation of mucocutaneous lesion. We have different types of herpes simplex, uh, different types of herpes viruses, like herpes, sim herpes simplex virus 1, herpes simplex virus 2, human herpes virus 6, human herpes virus 7, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, varicella zoster virus. Here our concern is to look what is going on in herpes simplex virus 1 and 2. This is herpes simplex virus 1. It is a capsid associated tagment complex. Herpes simplex virus 2, it looks like this. As we know that the primary infection caused by herpes simplex virus is often asymptomatic, but if it does cause symptom, it usually affects the oral pharyngeal mucosa. And in adults, it causes tonsillitis, pharyngitis, and in kids, it causes gingivus stomatitis, which usually referred to cold sore or fever blisters. Varicella zoster virus, chickenpox, is also a form of herpes virus that is caused by varicella zoster virus. And as we know that we have sensory receptors on our skin, and this is the place where cells get infected by the virus and taken up to the spinal cord, and it, 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 it actually moves along its cell body to the dorsal root ganglia. And as our immune system uh, activates immediately whenever some foreign body enters into the into our body so the cytotoxic T cell they causes the virus to feel threatened and the virus establishes a latent period a latency in the nucleus of neuron but at some point due to some triggering factor the recurrence takes place and the virus from the lysogenic phase shifts itself to the lytic phase of replication. And the virus moves back and down to the nerve root to cause a mucocutaneous lesion. In case of varicella zoster virus, when the varicella zoster virus reactivates, it leads to a painful and severe condition called shingles. And we can see the triggering factors are, you know, age. Because of age, we have less antibodies in our circulatory system to the varicella zoster virus and depressed cell-mediated immunity can also cause the recurrent varicella zoster virus. And uh, X-irradiation can also be the triggering cause of this infection. Let's move to the herpes labialis. The recurrent infection caused by herpes simplex virus 1 cause herpes labialis that are in the form of cold sore or fever blisters and the triggering factors are exposure to sun, emotional stresses, menstruation and uh, fever as well. As we know that herpes simplex virus reactivation leads to a mucocutaneous lesion and Herpes simplex virus, especially herpes simplex virus 2, that causes genital herpes. It enters into the body through, uh, through skin or damaged epithelium. Bacterial vaginosis. Bacterial vaginosis is an inflammation of the vagina due to an overgrowth of bacteria which is present in the normal flora of vagina.
Bacteriovaginosis and herpes simplex virus 2 has been associated with an increased risk of sexually transmitted infection. Herpes simplex virus 2 is the major cause of, uh, herp of sexually transmitted infection. Herpes simplex virus 2 and bacteriovaginosis have been linked to an increased risk of HIV virus entry into the body. And when HIV virus, which is human immunodeficiency virus, when it enters into the body, it binds with the cell surface receptors like CCR5, dendritic cells, CD4 plus T cells in macrophages. HIV virus initially uses, utilizes CD4 cell as a primary receptor. And we know that, the, that viral proteins may shortcut or the host immune response and directly affect the HIV trans in, transcription by transactivating long terminal repeat. Viral proteins ha, have been, uh, are, are capable of long terminal repeat transactivation that has been established in herpes simplex virus. So when HIV virus enters the body, dendritic cells are the first cells that recognize the HIV replicating products by, uh, through their cytoplasmic immune response. And dendritic cells are the first cells to get infected by HIV virus. And this infected dendritic cell moves the virus to the lymph node and from here to T cells. So this shift of virus from the, uh, from the, uh, from dendritic cells to uh, CD4 T cells increases the efficiency of HIV-1 transinfection of T lymphocytes. So, this is the HIV entry into the body and it come across macrophages, CD4 cells, mature dendritic cells and here the HIV replication takes place when it enters the body you, binding with the receptors uh, along with HIV-1 reverse transcriptase, uh, uh, integrase and other viral proteins. It enters the body and leads to the formation of viral DNA by reverse transcription. And then that leads to the formation of new RNA virus and that causes uh, the formation of viral proteins. And these viral proteins are capable of moving to the cell surface as an immature HIV virus. They are released from the body to, co to create mature HIV infectious virus. So this is all about HIV transmission and progression of disease in our body. Let's talk about epidemiology. In this slide, we will study uh, herpes simplex virus spread to, by contact and the risk of infection to a non-immune individual in uh, contact with contaminated secretion. This model prediction, the blue line, is actually by, done by National Health Nutrition Estimation Survey of the United States. In this case study, we discussed people aged under four, 10 to 49 years and it uh, has been uh, estimated that in year 1970, there was an increase of 60% of this infection, which gradually decreases up till now. So there is a decrease of 10%. This black line, this, this uh, black line shows the asymptomatic genital herpes and uh, this blue line shows the symptomatic and clinically diagnosed genital herpes. 
the crisscross graph year 90, year 2024 shows that there's a decrease oral to oral transmission and increase genital to oral transmission and the graph b shows oral to genital transmission decreases and genital to genital transmission increases let's talk about some clinical presentation regarding herpes simplex virus and cephalitis which is rare but severe condition caused by herpes simplex virus it is associated with with the cause it is usually associated as a cause of cold sore and then is the keratitis which is an inflammation of cornea bell's palsy is a unilateral facial paralysis due to an interruption in cranial nerve 5 then we have eczema herpetica. It is a cutaneous, extensive vesicular lesion of pre-existing skin disease, usually referred to atopic dermatitis. Then is herpes gladiatorum, which is seen among those people who are highly engaged in contact sports, like wrestlers or rugby players. It's also known as mat herpes. Then we have herpetic vitello. Herpetic vitello is an infection caused by herpes simplex virus that usually affects the fleshy part of an index finger or thumb. Then we have meningitis, the inflammation of the protective covering of brain. And it is actually a complication of genital herpes. Then we have Mollert syndrome. It is aseptic chronic benign inflammation of the protective covering of brain and spinal cord collectively called as meninges then we have retinitis inflammation of retina and then is the conjectivitis inflammation of conjectiva oral herpes as we know that the primary infection caused by herpes simplex virus usually affects the oropharyngeal mucosa it includes the buccal mucosa, the floor of the mouth, the anterior part of the tongue and area around the mouth, the facial area as well. Then is the gingival stomatitis, usually seen in kids, an inflammation of gums and stoma. It usually referred to cold sore and fever blister. And gingival stomatitis is an initial presentation during the first episode of herpes infection. Then we have the organs. Herpes simplex virus 1, when enters into the circ circ uh, circulatory system in an extreme condition, in severe condition, it affects different organs like lungs, kidneys, liver genital herpes caused by sexually transmitted infection primary herpes the infection caused by herpes simplex virus one symptoms associated with primary herpes simplex virus one they are more severe than herpes simplex virus two but the recurrent infection caused by herpes simplex virus two is severe than herpes simplex virus one. Then we have infection, orofacial infection. As we know that the initial uh, presentation uh, caused by herpes simplex virus is usually asymptomatic. But if it does cause symptom, it usually uh, it usually affects the oropharyngeal mucosa, and in adults, it leads to pharyngitis, tonsillitis, and in kids, it causes gingival stomatitis. Herpes simplex virus 1, recurrent infection, causes herpes labialis. They are in the form of blisters, and these blisters, when leak the fluid, they form sore. And these sore, after like a few days, they crust over and heals up. So it takes about 3 to 14 days. Associated symptoms are fever, myalgia, which is a painful condition uh, usually associated with uh, one muscle or group of muscles. 
that leads to a body ache kind of a kind of a situation. Malaise, which is kind of a feeling when patient is in a state of restlessness, uneasiness. He's in a trouble, fatigued, depression, anxiety. All conditions are related uh, with this herpes simplex virus infection. And we come across irritability in patients as well. Cervical lymph nodes get swelled up. There are, there, there are swollen cervical lymph nodes that leads to cervical adenopathy. And due to the painful blister and painful vesicular lesion, patient is unable to eat or drink. The lesion sites are the buccal mucosa, the floor of the mouth, and the interior part of the tongue, gingiva, gums, lips, the margin of the lips, under the nose, and the facial area, the area around the mouth, the area around uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the lips or uh, the corner of the lips are, are also uh, affected, or area around the mouth, the facial area. And as we know that lesion, these lesions are actually ulcerative and exudative. These are the vesicular lesion. When they rupture, they, they form ulcerative exudates, which we can see on the posterior pharynx and on tonsils as well. Immunosuppressed patients. Immunosuppressed patients are at high risk of getting herpes simplex virus infection. And when the immunosuppressed patient get this infection or those patients who are on immunosuppressive drugs, they, their symptoms are even more worse than patients who are not immunosuppressed and who are not on immunosuppressive drugs. It causes mucosal and deep cutaneous layer infection. We come across cervical abnormality in such patients called cervicitis. Friability. Necrosis. We come across punctated areas of yellow tan necrosis with hyperemic rim, which are seen in different organs like lungs, liver, spleen. Patient gets patient feels severe pain. It is a very painful condition in such patients. The symptoms are quite severe and the lesion uh, gets, uh, the lesion are quite severe, the lesions are quite painful. The blisters which are formed uh, in immunosuppressed patients, they are quite, you know, painful in such patients. Bleeding from the lesion site and patient because of uh, the severity of uh, symptoms and uh, painful blisters and painful vesicular lesion, patient is unable to eat or even drink. Our patient is in a, in a state of real agony. Yes, as we know that herpes simplex virus, it occurs in three different phases. First is the primary phase, and then is the latent phase, and then is the recurrence phase. During the primary phase, we know that the primary infection caused by herpes simplex virus usually affects the oropharyngeal mucosa. And it usually, we, we, we come across lesions on the anterior part of the tongue and the floor of the mouth, the buccal mucosa, and uh, an area you can, you can see inside uh, the mouth. The areas are, are, are affected uh, during the primary infection caused by herpes simplex virus. And then comes the latent phase. During this phase, virus is not replicating, it is not multiplying. Or in other words, virus is in a very calm manner and it's lying calmly in the nucleus of neuron. 
And then we have the recurrence phase. When the virus shifts itself from the lysogenic phase, that is the shedding phase, the hiding phase in the neuron, to the lytic phase of replication. When wires start replicating due to some triggering factors and uh, we come across uh, the lesion in the form of blisters which actually is seen on the margin of the lips and uh, under the nose um, and these blisters they leak the fluid and form sore and these sore after a few days they crust over and start healing. So herpes simplex virus takes three different phases during its infection phase and transmission phase. Genital herpes caused by sexually transmitted disease. First episode of primary genital herpes gives symptoms like itching, dysuria, patient feels difficulty and feels painful micturation. A patient feel difficulty and uh, it is a very uh, painful uh, condition when patient passes urine. Then is malaise. Patient is in uneasy state, in state of fatigue, depression, restless, or in other way, patient is in trouble because of this condition. Body pain is also uh, documented. And then is the vaginal discharge in female. Fever, headache, and myalgia, where one, one, uh, it is associated with the pain in one muscle or it is associated with pain in multiple muscles or group of muscles. Then is the tender inguinal lymphadenopathy, urethral discharge in males. In female, the organs, uh, the areas which are affected are vagina, cervix, labia majora, minora, and in male, we have the shaft of the penis and the urethra. We come across bilateral lesions in the form of pustules and uh, clusters of vesicles and painful erythematous ulcers having red base lesion. Herpes simplex virus proctitis. Herpes simplex virus causes an inflammation of rectum. It is often seen in those patients who have had anoreceptive intercourse. They come across symptoms like uh, intermittent anorectal bleeding, anorectal pain, the abdominal cramping, anorectal discharge, tenismus. Tenismus is a condition um, when patient having a bowel movement, even when he already have had one. And constipation as well, patient having rectal and perennial infection. Herpatic weight law. Herpatic weight law is an infection caused by herpes simplex virus that usually affects the fleshy part of an index finger or thumb. It rarely causes infection uh, to the nail cuticles or big toe. Herpes, herpatic weight law. Uh, are more commonly seen in people who have had genital herpes. It is highly contagious. The symptoms include redness, swelling, painful blisters, which may be one or in groups. And it is highly contagious as well. And because of severity uh, of pain, people are given analgesics to numb the pain. Associated features are scarring, nail damage, it causes numbness, tingling sensation in fingers and hand, and we have skin hypersensitivity associated with herpatic weight low. 
Then we have herpes gladiatorum. Herpes gladiatorum uh, is an infection which is seen among those people who are highly engaged in contact sports, like wrestlers or rugby players, where skin-to-skin -skin contact is much more. And uh, it is also known as mat herpes. The associated symptoms are fever, headache, swollen lymph nodes. It is highly contagious. It can spread from uh, person to person by using, by, uh, by using uh, eating utensils, by sharing a cup or using a cell phone. It can easily transfer from person to person and due to, uh, it can also transfer uh, by sexual contact as well. And these vesicular lesions, they are seen on face, trunk, neck, and arms. Moving to an extension, uh, herpes simplex virus, when it gets severe, it causes an infection of eye. Herpes simplex virus keratitis, which is an infection of cornea. Patient feels gritty feeling in the eye and, it, and they come across discharge from the eye and pain, pain, painful condition as well, pain in the eye as well. The onset of symptoms are acute and uh, people come across blurry vision that end up complete vision loss. Then we have chemosis, which is swelling of conjunctiva. And then we have inflammation of conjunctiva, conju conjunctiva as well. And characteristic dendritic lesions of cornea are also seen. In this picture, you can easily see the dendritic lesion of the cornea. Moving to an extension, we also come across stromal keratitis, which is potentially a blinding disease of eye due to an infection caused by herpes simplex virus that causes inflammation to the cornea. Then we have chorioretinitis, an inflammation of choroid. Choroid is actually a vascular pigmented covering of an eye. Nervous system. As we know that the primary infection caused by herpes simplex virus leads to a mucocutaneous lesion and very rarely it causes encephalitis. But if it does cause encephalitis, it is it leads to a life-threatening condition. The virus enters into the central nervous system from the peripheral part of the face or from the nasal cavity into the central nervous system along with olfactory and trigeminal nerves. When the lesion is on the tip of the nose and on the side of the nose, it is actually the nasociliary branch of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. And when the lesion is on the uvula and on the tonsillar area, it is actually the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. And when the lesion is seen on the buccal mucosa and the floor of the mouth and on the interior part of the tongue, it is actually the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. It is very rare that all the branches of trigeminal nerves are involved, but they are often seen in patients who are immunocompromised. The latency of virus is established in the nucleus of the peripheral neuron of the host. But at some point, uh, the recurrent infection takes place and the virus start replicating and multiplying, especially in the temporal lobe, which as we know is associated with new memories and uh, emotions. So when temporal lobe get infected or damaged, it gives a bizarre behavior in people, um, sometimes amnesia. 
So, in this picture, we can see encephalitis, herpes simplex virus is multiplying and replicating, and encephalitis is a life-threatening condition, which you can see in this picture. When herpes simplex virus affects this autonomic nervous system, it causes autonomic, ner autonomic uh, nervous system dysfunction. And we come across the first uh, presentation is the impotence, where we can see uh, erectile dysfunction in male that end up to infertility. Then we have cerebrospinal fluid pleocytosis, which is an abnormal increase in lymphocytes in the cerebrospinal fluid. Then we have numbness, tingling, and tingling sensation in fingers and hand. Then we have tingling sensation of buttocks or perineal areas. And urinary retention because of some uh, stone or infection and constipation. Herpes simplex virus, when enters into the circulatory system, it affects different organs and the severity of herpes simplex virus leads to herpes simplex virus esophagitis. Esophagitis is a common presentation caused by acid reflux disease, but herpes simplex virus also causes a viral esophagitis, where we can see inflammation of the esophagus and patient feels difficulty in swallowing. And a uh, patient come across uh, symptoms like chest pain and heartburn. Then we have pneumonitis. When herpes simplex virus affects the lung, it causes pneumonitis. And as we know that it leads to a life-threatening respiratory failure which, uh, uh, with uh, bilateral changes on thoracic imaging as well. In this picture of x-ray, we can see a diffuse interstitial pattern in the other picture, we can see, uh, this is a picture of high resolution CT scan. And this picture shows the partial atelectasis in the lower right lobe of the lung. And uh, pleural effusion is also seen in this picture and ground glass parents as well. Transbronchial bronchoscopy. Actually, uh, uh, transbronchial bronchoscopy uh, uh, is actually, we can see that this picture shows the uh, multiple bleeding and uh, transbronchial uh, inflammation as well. When herpes simplex virus affects kidneys, it causes glomerulonephritis and this is the histological picture that shows adrenal necrosis and hemorrhages and glomerulonephritis, glomerulonephritis is actually a condition where kidneys get inflamed and we get symptoms like proteinuria, excess of protein in the urine, hematuria, excess of blood in the urine and uh, hypertension as well and uh, edema of face, feet and hands as well. When herpes simplex virus affects the neonate, it affects neonates in three different phases, intrauterine, perinatal, and postnatal. 5% of the cases where neonates get infected during intrauterine life, in the uterus, when the mother uh, get infected during pregnancy, so 5% of the cases where neonates are prone to get infection by herpes simplex virus in the uterus of mother. And 85% of the cases uh, where neonates get infected during delivery, where they are exposed to the infected vaginal secretion. 
Neonates symptoms occur in three different patterns. Initially, skin, muco mucous membrane, and eyes are affected. And the severity of condition, if we come across, we see keratoconjunctivitis. And then the and then the infection uh, uh, transmits to the central nervous system, and we see lethargy and uh, seizures as well. And if untreated, it leads to disseminated infection or sepsis, and finally organ failure. Pregnancy: the transmission of this virus of herpes simplex virus from mother to baby is highest in pregnancy. So during pregnancy, the mothers are advised not to go for the normal delivery or any other procedure that can cause injury to the neonates, but the C-section. And if uh, if the neonates or if the newborn get infected by herpes simplex virus, there is high risk of autism child. Autism is a condition uh, where one have an unusual behavior towards objects, variation in abilities, and uh, we come across over or under reaction towards or five senses like touch, smell, hearing, sight, temperature, and uh, we come across central nervous system abnormalities as well. And finally, infertility. Well, the diagnosis, the initial diagnosis are actually uh, are made uh, by looking the overall picture, the overall, the, the gross looks of this lesion, as we know, it is a vesicular lesion, which is ulcerative and exudative in nature. And uh, the symptoms associated with this uh, infection, like some people come across pharyngitis, tonsillitis, and uh, we come across herpetic ulcerations and uh, oropharyngeal mucosa infections as well, so gingivus stomatitis, especially in kids. So initial presentation is regarding the overall looks and the location of this uh, infection. Like it is located uh, in the oropharyngeal mucosa, it usually affects uh, the area around the mouth, usually the margin of the lips and uh, the area around the mouth, the facial areas and uh, the genital areas as well. Yes, and then we come across laboratory investigations that includes ZAC preparation, where we get the sample from fresh lesion to look for viral DNA. And then is the pap smear. Pap smear is a multi-chromatic cytological uh, staining technique to make a diagnosis. And uh, then we have PCR, po polymerase chain reaction test, to, uh, uh, to check for the viral DNA. And then we can grow virus by using the viral cultures as well. And some serological uh, testing like we, uh, which is used, uh, in which we can see that uh, antibodies uh, which are formed during the first several weeks after the infection. So this is all about the diagnosis. Let's move on to the treatment. As we know that herpes simplex virus, there is no cure for herpes simplex virus, but we can treat it with antiviral medications or home remedies. The antiviral medications are acyclovir, famcyclovir, and valacyclovir. We have some antiviral topical ointments and creams to numb the pain and itchiness as well. And then we have antiviral vaccines, which are given to already immune person as well. So this is all about herpes simplex virus. Let's have
have a quick review to all this. As we know that most of the time, herpes simplex virus 1 and 2, they cause asymptomatic latent infection in sacral and trigeminal ganglia for life. Sometimes uh, gives recurrent oral and, and genital herpes. And uh, severe infection includes ker ker keratoconjunctivitis, meningitis, and cephalitis, and uh, as well as neonatal infections, which uh, come across when the neonates they are exposed to infected vaginal secretion. So, thank you very much for watching scaria.com.